We want to go over uh, importing and opening uh, data files in a uh, SAS EG. So for this exercise, we're going to go ahead and use a Excel uh, spreadsheet entitled uh, Products. And uh, when bringing in um, Excel files into SAS EG, we want to use the uh, import option. So first thing we want to do is uh, create a new project. So in SAS EG, we go to File, we go to New, and then Project. And now you see we have our process flow here. Okay, so we want to import this uh, products uh, Excel uh, spreadsheet. So we can either go to open or we can go to import data. Those are usually our options for bringing in data. But for Excel files, we want to use import data. Okay, so then I have my uh, data set stored on a flash drive. And so I'll just go back. So this is how I would navigate and then find my folders. and then look for the products. Okay, so we open it, this is the import wizard, and it just gives you kind of a general uh, general information, like where the file is located, what kind of uh, <clears throat> data type it is. So we'll just go to next. So for this, we wanna use a product list. This Excel spreadsheet uh, has two worksheets. There's a product list and prod format. We wanna use product list. <clears throat> and we also wanna make sure that the first row of range contains uh, field names is uh, checked off and I'll explain what that is here in a second. Uh, so we can just go ahead and click finish. And here's our products uh, Excel <coughs> data sheet. And so notice at the top are uh, column, uh, column names. We have ID, product line, product category all the way down here. So go to modify task and we can see what happens if we didn't have that, that box checked off. So if we uncheck the first row of range contains field names, uncheck it, click finish, click yes. So now you notice that our column names are just uh, these placeholders F1, F2, F3, and the actual names of our, our uh, columns are actually in the very first row. So that's, the, that's why it's important to make sure you have that, uh, that box uh, checked off. So now go back, modify task, <clears throat> next. And whenever you want to make changes to your data set, if you feel you made a mistake or something, you can always just click on the modify uh, task tab back here. So recheck and click finish. Yes, we want to replace the results. And this is our data set. That we okay, so now that we've imported an Excel file, let's go ahead and import a text file. Uh, so for this, we're going to be using this orders.txt uh, uh, file. And uh, we're going to do the same thing that we did for the uh, Excel spreadsheet as far as uh, importing it. So we go to File, Import Data, and then go over to the location where the file's at. And it'll be Orders. And I already have this open, so you do the exact same thing. Go to Open, and then the Import Wizard should pop up again. And so by default, the delimiter of uh, fields is uh, marked off, but a lot of times we don't know exactly how the uh, text file will actually be formatted once it gets put in a SAS. Uh, and so after looking over the, uh, the text file, it seemed that we actually needed to fix our columns. So down here we click Fixed Columns, and by default, these markers are kind of cutting off our values. So just what you need to do is just make sure you move the markers all the way to give your column enough space to have all the uh, observations in. And I've done this for all of these. As you can see, every column is pretty much uh, separated. Uh, nothing kind of rolls over into the other columns because if that's the case, then it won't actually read the data properly and it'll shift the data down into different cells rather than all the way across <clears throat> the way it would normally come out like a, a table. And for this, we'll also have the uh, file contains file names on record number uh, checked off. And so we go to finish. And here's our, our orders uh, text file that is now a SAS data set. Okay, now let's see <clears throat> what we have to do for importing SPSS files. So this is a little bit different. We're not going to go through file this time. We'll have to go through tasks at the top. So click that, and then go to data, 
and way at the bottom you'll see import SPSS file. And of course we do the same thing, uh, go to the file location where we have it stored. Okay, so we're going to use the employee payroll uh, file. So we can double click or click open. And it gives you an overview of uh, where it's uh, located on the SAS server <clears throat> and the actual uh, file location. Uh, so we'll just click OK. And here's our SAS data set. Um, this is the output data. So let's see what actually happens, what SAS base is doing. So this is all the code for actually inputting uh, or importing the, uh, the SPSS file. Uh, it's a good idea to familiar with, uh, yourselves with this now because eventually you will be doing some coding. So you can actually manipulate the code here and run it <clears throat> and it'll change the, uh, the output. If you wanted to actually create a new program separate from this, you can go to your process flow, click file, and go to new, and then click program. And then you can type in whatever you want to do, whatever program you want. You can link it to any node you want. And this is what our process flow will actually look like now. So a lot of times after we have our SAS data sets <clears throat> already open in, uh, in SAS EG, we want to change uh, some of the formats to the, uh, to the columns or observations that, <clears throat> that, are, that we have set up. Um, to do this, we can create formats and change things around. Uh, so we're going to use an Excel spreadsheet for this, so we're going to import it and go to the location. It's going to be called Demographics uh, Excel Spreadsheet. Okay. And so here's our, uh, our SAS uh, data set. <clears throat> so notice how under gender, uh, male and female are represented by M and F, and satisfaction is represented by a <clears throat> numeric values ra ranging from five is the most satisfied and uh, one is the least satisfied. So we want to ch uh, change these around, make it easier for somebody else to read. So to create a format, we go to Tasks, Data, we go to Create Format. So first thing that pops up, we're going to go ahead and create a format name. So first we're going to take care of the gender format. Gender format. On the left hand side you see we have the option to define formats. So the format definition first, uh, we're going to click New. And this is going to be the new label that we're changing our male and female uh, values to. <clears throat> so we want to change F to female, so we type in female. And then down here we have the option for a discrete value or a range of values. And we're going to use a discrete uh, type for this one. And so we put in the old value, which was oops, F. Okay, so then now we take care of the male. So our new label, instead of M, will be male, spelled out. And then we go down here and type in M. And so we can run this. And of course, nothing happens, <clears throat> but if you go to the process flow, you see we have our format down here. And this is a good time to change the format to, especially if you're working with a lot of formats, and maybe you may, may get confused uh, pretty easily. So we'll just go to rename, and we'll change it to gender. Okay, now let's take care of the other format. So we go back to tasks, data, uh, create format. <clears throat> so this one we'll just call it satisfaction. And this will be a numeric format type. We go back to define formats. And so go to new. So we're going to place our numeric values or a range of those numeric values with uh, actual uh, uh, words that justify what those ranges actually mean. So from 1 to 2, <clears throat> this will be unsatisfied. So our new label will be unsatisfied. Okay, so now we have to change our discrete values since we're working with ranges to range. And our lowest value will be 1. And our upper value will be 2. And you can see up here at the top, it tells us our range, our new label. So we go ahead and create a new label. And so if it's three, this person is satisfied. Of course, we go down here. We can just use a discrete value. It's only one value. 
<clears throat> and then one more. This would be the people that gave a four or five were deemed satisfied. So our new label is satisfied. And this would be a range of values from four to five. <clears throat> now we could have used discrete values and you know done two labels for for one and two separately, but when you use ranges it's it's much more simpler. So we'll run this. And we'll go to our process flow. Scroll down. We'll go ahead and rename our format. <clears throat> Okay, now how do we actually apply these to the uh, the demographics data set that we're using? So we click on our we can click on the data set in our process flow, or right click on it, and we're going to use the query builder. So we go to query builder, <clears throat> and over here is all the are all our variables. Uh, we can choose which ones we want to keep. We just click them and move them over to this area. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and use all of them, so we can select all of them, slide them over. <clears throat> So we, first we go to gender, and you notice we have the format column right here. So we can double click this, and you see we have our format that we want to add so we can change it. And we go to user defined since we defined our own format. And here we see our fo gender formats that I just created. Okay, click OK. And then we go to satisfaction, same thing, format. We change it, <clears throat> user defined. Satisfaction format, OK, OK. And now we run the query builder. Oops. OK, so now you see that our under our gender column, the M and Fs have changed to uh, male and female, respectively. And our satisfaction uh, uh, column has gone from our numeric values to what those numeric values actually mean.